Thank God for his unfailing compassion. So we look to him now, Father, in the name of your Son, Lord Jesus Christ, we come to say thank you for the many and innumerable blessings he continues to bestow upon us and continue to give of yourself giving what we cannot receive otherwise we you are so good to us we're asking you to help us that we can understand the greatness of your love the greatness of your care so that in turn we can give ourselves the more to your will and purpose for our lives. We thank you in advance for what you will do for us this day and even in this very service. We thank you, Jesus. There's not a time that you are not concerned about bringing us closer and giving us a more fuller and a more satisfying life to the praise and the glory of your name. Jesus Christ, for every need in this house, we thank you for supplying it. For the soul that is not yet filled with the Holy Ghost, we pray in your name, Jesus, that soul will open up to you and receive your promise. Do this today, Lord, and the soul that is struggling, having difficulties, and we ask for your intervention in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory of God our Savior, and so be it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and you may be seated, and we do honor the Lord today, and honor to our, all of our clergy and to our pastor, and to our presider today, Dr. Wiley, we thank God for you, and for this awesome choir, these, these young people. almost got me too tired to preach. He wants you to do this and do this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I thank the Lord for Jesus. Thank him for Jesus. He is, he's just good to us. That's all. That's just the bottom line. And, you know, it, it opens the door. It should open the door wide for our entrance to service and commitment. It, it should say to us that I've given you an opportunity to be rewarded. I'm, I'm taking you through something so that I can reward you for your victories. And all of our victories is because of his grace. There's not a victory each of us can ever have without his grace. Someone said that my strength has its most perfect manifestation in my weakness. It reaches a level of perfection that could not be obtained without his grace. And Paul cried and he prayed and he wanted some help. Fast and prayed for three different times. And, and the Lord came and spoke to him and said, my grace is sufficient for thee. 
my strength is made perfect in weakness. If you want true perfection, it is found in weakness. God gives us perfection. He is simply saying to us, you can't have it no other way. If you are to enjoy perfection, it is in your weakness. And it's the weakness which we understand that without the Lord, I can do nothing. When I truly understand that, then there becomes an, a presence of God and he began to do things in our lives that brings glory and honor and blessings to us as well. He is doing this for us right now. So I pray in the name of Jesus Christ as we speak to you from the word of God that you'll understand that. That we can present ourselves to him the more. That's what he wants from us. And it is clear in scripture that the only way he can get that from us, he has to defeat us. Because we are enmity against God because of our carnality. So he has, and we become a four. Instead of someone who is with him and, and are unified with him, we are anti-God. If each of us knew right now how much anti-God we are, you would say to the Lord, work on me. <laughs> because there's no true victory until there is surrender, yieldedness. Until I find myself saying, as the Apostle Paul said, that when I'm weak, then am I strong. And he went on to talk about the fact that our glory in my infirmities now, I used to worry about this, but it's all about God bringing me closer to him. And I'm grateful for that. Are you grateful for that? Yeah. Amen. We all grateful until it's not hurting. And we start crying. But I'm thankful to the Lord for all that he, he allows to happen. And, and then he just uh, shows himself strong. I'm thankful to him for that. Praise the Lord. Scripture I wish to use today is from the book of Colossians, the second chapter. I want to use one verse of the second chapter of Colossians. The work of victory has already been wrought. Everything that needs to be done has been done for our victory. Everything. The 15th verse of the second chapter of Colossians. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it, triumphing over them, compelling triumph, compelling triumph. The Lord knew what was needed. Scripture talks about him declaring the end from the beginning talks about him treading the wine press alone. 
it talks about him being the source of life, being life. He, he declared himself to be the way, the truth, and the life. The life he portrays is eternal. The life that he came to give is eternal and abundant. So he wants us to live abundantly. Compelling to triumph. The cause of triumph cannot be restricted. Always in, a, in, in, in every place, but show that also intended cause is to try. Paul regarded himself as a, a signal trophy of someone who had to be defeated in order to become a servant. Each of us have to be defeated by God. In, in other words, the word of God has to it, it has to kill you. And, and when I use that word, I was trying to find another word. <clears throat> but that what has to happen. And this is what the Lord says. Uh, Except you hate your life, then you can't live. So if he tells me to hate my life, we know that he already hates it because it is carnal. And he has to, he has to, he has to destroy one life in order to give us another life. Do you know, even after we're saved, we're still trying to carry on with carnality. And we'll be surprised, even after the Holy Ghost comes, you've got so much carnality. So unless the Lord allows something to continue to happen, to purge us. Do you know when the Lord gave Moses a passing grade, that was not that he had reached perfection. When he said that he had live perfect and so on. It was simply a, a passing grade for his early classes. But God has more for us. Do you believe he has more? This 15th verse lets us know that this captain has challenged and overcome everything that will keep you from being what he died for you to be. He has become that, that powerful captain of the army of God who puts you in a position so all you have to do is to hear him and, and I'm thinking of Joshua, the, the, the fifth chapter, when he talked about the captain of which told him to pull his shoes off. And he wanted to know, Joshua wanted to know, are you for us or for them? And he said, neither. I'm just the captain of the Lord. So, what we have in the 15th verse of this Colossians 2, he is telling us that we have the triumph, we have the victory. 
what did Joshua do to overcome the great walled up city of Jericho? He just had to believe it and shout that it belongs to you. There are things that we are not enjoying because we have not believed it and gave God the praise and the glory. It's already yours. You already have the victory. So the Apostle Paul regarded himself as a signal trophy of God's victorious power in Christ Jesus. When he fell to the ground, he said, Lord, who art thou? And he said, I am Jesus. So God has to conquer us. He has to deal with us before we can become a servant. He's got to take out of our minds and our, out of our spirit of this personal, uh, individual kind of, 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 of isolation from him that you can do it yourself. No, no. But that requires time. That requires fasting. That requires seeking the face of God. That requires believing that God is there for me and he wants me to be better than I am. It is a sad thing for us to reach a point in our spiritual life and feel that I have it so much that I can't even raise my hand, I can't praise him, I can't even get on my knees, I can't, I can't make prayer meetings and, and, and I can't get involved in the work of God. Uh, we we kind of isolate ourselves from one another and, and the Lord is saying to you, you, you can't make it that way. It is necessary for you to follow my plan if you want the victory that I've already given you. If you want to really enjoy life, then follow my plan. Because my plan has already been certified and it's already been accomplished. My plan has already been accomplished. So he is saying to us, the almighty conqueror was leading him about through all of the cities of, of Greece and Rome and throughout the world. The Lord took this man, but you know who was doing the, 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 the triumphing? It was the one who did it in this 15th verse of the second chapter of Colossians. It was, it was Jesus Christ who he allowed Jesus to become a part of his life. And he realizes that he couldn't do it himself. He talked about how he had achieved in times gone by. He said, I achieved more than my brother is my equal. But now I realize that unless I count all of that dung and reach out for Jesus, the captain and the tripe that he has already won for me, that I will never enjoy life and victory and I'll never be able to do anything for the kingdom of God until I yield myself to the will of God. So he said, I didn't want to have my way and my will to be done, but I wanted only for the will of God to be done in my life. How many want the will of God done in your life? If you want his will to be done, there's something you have to do. You have to present yourself as a living sacrifice. You have to say to the Lord, I want you to take charge of me. Do you know we're living in a time now where, where people do what they want to do when they want to do it. They act like they, they, don't, they don't even uh, respect being in the army of the Lord. But in the United States Army, you, you, can, you, can, you can hardly tell a person from another one that is in marching in, in, in situations. Uh, I used to wonder how could they stay so unified and in step with one another because they've been trained. They have been made to do so. Do you not know that people
people have more respect for the generals in the army than they are for the generals in God's army? God has generals in his army also. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You're looking at one. I'm a general in the army of the Lord. And I do believe that if you would follow the directions, God has already given you the victory. And you don't have to worry about that because God knows how to take care of his business. If you just let God take care of your business, God will bless you so you can have the victory over every demon that come up against you. Satan is a liar. I said he is a liar. And he wants you to feel that anytime time Satan's going to take you out. No way. Satan can't do that to you. All you have to do is to believe God and let the devil know that I believe that the God I serve, he is able to keep that. I commit unto him. I know he is able. If you know he's able, you ought to tell the Lord thank you because he is able. He simply wants you to know that you are not in this battle alone. He said the weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but it is mighty through God pulling down strongholds and casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Everything the devil bring, God has already brought it down. Can you shout hallelujah? And if you want to serve God, you can do it. And you praise the Lord. Stop making these excuses about this, that, and the other. Tell the devil he's a liar. And tell the Lord I thank you. You got the victory already. I said you got it already. Oh, hallelujah. You got it already. You got it already. Do you not know that? as to be led in triumph by man and so often we are more I guess respect respectable to the pharmacy at the corner drugstore than we are to God. If he gives us a prescription, we'll ask questions. They will say to you, do you have any questions? When you pick up your prescription. So you pick up your prescription. And if you have questions, then they answer them for you. You go home, you look at that bottle, and you follow it to a T. I can stand up here and tell you over and over what you're supposed to do. And you leave here with your mouth poked out. Some of you got your mouth poked out now. <laughs> but thank God he has an army they got a very popular song they sing now uh, about the about the army is rising up and, and the chains let me tell you you can sing all you want but if you don't do what God tell you to do. Ain't no chains going nowhere. Hallelujah. Oh, we get into the song and here we go. But until you obey God, no chains are going to fall off. You may dance with them, but they're still on you. Hallelujah. And that's the truth. I'm supposed to tell you the truth. Because people can dance with chains. <laughs> Hallelujah. But isn't it good to see God take them off of you? When you can be true in your heart 
true in your spirit. And stop trying to deceive yourself and other people. You're just trying to make yourself what you haven't allowed God to make you to be. Jesus is the only creator. He's the only maker of our lives. And he can't do no more with you than you allow him to. And I said that way because not that God can't throw you down and do this, that, and the other. But God wants us to know, I don't want to do that. I want you to see my love. And I want you to see what I've done for you. And I want you to come to me because of that. Come to me because I love you. And come and let me love you all over and over again. Because you can't do it yourself. You need me every step of the way. You need me. Pray and ask me to take charge of your life. Because everything else isn't going to work. It's not going to work. I said it's not going to work. Hallelujah. Here he, he said, our only true triumph of God's triumph over us, we will never have true triumph until God triumphs over us. Do you believe that? There never be true triumph in your life until God triumphs over you. Because God is the only one who can give you perfect victory. And this victory is in our weakness. It is when I can say to the Lord, I can't do this and I need you. Thank you for it, Jesus. To know that Jesus is with us and to know that Jesus Christ has fought for us. I believe Jesus is fighting now for us through and by his own self, his body. Jesus Christ did his greatest fight while he was in his earthly setting. And he triumphed over Satan. And then he put on that glorified body again. And he left here his natural and spiritual body. So we are now to fight for one another through fighting for Jesus Christ. Because of the oneness of God, the oneness of the church, the oneness of what God is putting together, there's no way for you to be blessed and I'm not blessed. There's no way for you to hurt and I don't hurt. We are so united in one another until whatever happens to you happens to all of us. Until we see it that way, until we begin to present ourselves as better than others. I don't think I can say this too much because I think that helps us to become weaker and causes us to fail to achieve the things that God wants us to. So this is what I want to conclude with and say to you because I just believe what is important for us to allow the Lord to, to defeat us. I need to be defeated. I, I need to get 
me out of my mind. I, I sit there today and I saw the Lord fulfilling my prayer. We talked about prayer being seeds that you plant. And saints, I could see and feel my seed and my harvest coming up. I feel it inside. You got to feel that what you ask God for is coming to pass. And, and I see this happening because God has already triumphed over the devil. And everything that could hinder me from getting what he promised me to have. Praise the Lord, he has already conquered it. And all I have to do now is to believe him, serve him, and obey him. And the Lord will bring it to pass. I saw my harvest coming. I saw my prayer being fulfilled. I believe we said to you some time ago about making logs of your prayers and go back and check it and see how, how good are we doing here. How sincere was your prayer? I believe the Lord will answer every prayer that you ask him for. If he doesn't answer it one way, he'll answer it another. But God is a prayer answering God. I said he will answer your prayer. He may not give you everything you ask for, but he'll always give you something better. It's a good God because he sometimes knows that what you're asking for is not the best thing for for you but if you ask me for something I'm going to answer your prayer you have never praise the Lord heard your child cry and not say something to him even if you don't say nothing but shut up your mouth you got to hear from God can you shout hallelujah he's a prayer hearing God and everything praise the Lord that would hinder you God has already conquered it I don't care what the devil bring he can bring Bring anything. He can bring a, 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 a one of those one of those rattlers that they call them the sidewinders, and, and they are poisonous snakes, and they are sidewinders, and they are very sneaky. You see, God has already conquered that sneaky sidewinder, that demon who try to sneak up on you and try to stop you from achieving your goal. But if God be for you, who can? be against you. You got the victory already. You ought to shout yes in the house and let the Lord know I appreciate you having given me victory over my adversary. And sometimes our greatest adversary is ourselves. You can't help but have victory. If you let the Lord triumph over you. Amen. Thank you for doing it, Jesus. Thank you for doing it. Thank you, Lord. To be led and triumphed by God. brings you to glory unspeakable and full of glory. He brings you to another level. When you are led in triumph by God, and you, you say, how do I, how am I led in triumph? It is when I look into God's truth and I accept his truth and I ask God for humility. Give me humility. I want to dress up like he dressed up. The Lord himself dressed up in humility and he wanted us to dress up in humility. I thank him for having triumphed over my adversary. 
He has given us victory, saints. I don't care what the devil come up with. That's been taken care of too. He may come up with a new thing, if you please. But that's been taken care of too. Because the Lord is with us. I said he is with us. The Lord is here in this room right now where we are. In that 2 Corinthians, the 4th chapter, in the, uh, the 10th chapter, rather, in verse 5, he was saying, and he was saying, casting down imaginations, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Casting it down and bringing into captivity. God taking captive of every evil. Bringing it into captivity to the thoughts and the obedience of Christ. To every thought to the obedience of Christ. Capturing in it to Christ and so joins in this tribe. We are part of the tribe because we are with him. We are part of the tribe. Even before we go through it, God is already there to take us through it because he is already the captain who overcomes every opposing force. I thank him for that. Do you thank him for that? According to Hebrews, the second chapter, and I want to read this just for a moment. Jesus Christ is so near us. He is so close to us. The 11th verse of that second chapter says, For both ye that sanctify and they who are sanctified are all of one. Jesus Christ become one with us. For which cause... He is not ashamed to call them brotherings. We are part of him. Do you, do you feel the part of him? So he is saying, I will declare their name unto the brotherings, unto my brotherings. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Jesus Christ is going to sing. He's going to join the anointed singing of the choir, the anointed singing of individuals. And he said, again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children of God that the children of God has given me. God has given to me children of which I have triumphed over every opposing force to give them the victory. He went on to say in the 14th verses, for, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Even as it relates to going to sleep. Verse 15 says, And deliver them who through the fear of death were all of their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily I took not on him the nature of angels, but I took upon him the seed of Abraham. That's what Jesus did. He got in the same fleshly situation that we was in. Only this flesh was not by the will of man, but by the will of God. And he was all God and all man at the same time. And he triumphed over the demons of hell. I'm thankful for that. He, he fixed it for us, saints. You got the victory already. I say, you got the victory already. And, and we want to give him praise for it. If we read on through the last verse there, and he said, Verily, I took not on him the nature of angels, but this, I took upon him the seed of Abraham, whereunto, wherefore, in all things, 
it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. In other words, he bringing us into this same triumphant victory that he might be the merciful and the faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation of the sins of the people. For in that he himself have suffered being tempted, he is able to succor or to help and to give victory to them that are tempted. Every one of you who may go through anything, the devil bring about you. God is there to bring you through it. And we need to be reminded of the fact that he has already triumphed over it. And I'm just supposed to rejoice in it and let him know I appreciate him. And I believe him because I know God is true. God is able. And whatever comes upon me, I got the victory already. If you know you got it, you ought to tell him thank you. God is a good God. And he has brought us into a place where we can give him praise. And as, as Tyron was singing the song, he said that I've learned how to praise him even in my difficult times. Even my, 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 my circumstances don't have a chance because God is so good to me. Is he good to you, saints? He, he's good enough to take me through. I'm going to praise him in the midst of my storm, in the midst of my difficulty, because praise is what I do. We can praise him until, praise the Lord, the, the power of God begin to descend upon us. But the Bible lets us to know that everything that the devil got has already been brought into obedience of Christ. Can you shout hallelujah? And this is, this is referring to everything that belonged to the body of Christ. Everything that belongs to the church. God said, I got charge of it. If you are part of the church, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Upon this rock, you got the victory. If you know you got it, if you believe in God, you got it already. I said, you got it already. Don't let the devil take your joy. Don't let him take your, praise the Lord, your praise. But you ought to let the devil know that uh, it's too late now. Jesus done triumphed over all of my adversary and given me victory. All I've got to do is to obey him and praise him and serve him. And every demon, uh, praise the Lord, come up against me. Praise the Lord, I can resist him and he'll flee from from me. I got the victory today. If you got the victory you ought to tell the Lord thank you because the Lord has already fought every battle. Praise the Lord that we need to fight. He is the one. Hallelujah. All the only fight that we have to fight is the good fight of faith. If I can believe God the devil is a liar. If I can believe God God is going to defeat every evil come against me. I got the victory. Thank him for the victory. Thank him for the victory. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Jesus. You see, because of who we are, because of who God has made us, we become off limit for trespassers. We become God's property. We got some deeds to a little piece of land somewhere and we think it's ours. But the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. I thank you for the victory saints. Hallelujah, we became his property. I belong to the Lord. The Lord said, you're not your own, but you've been bought with a price. So he said, I want you to glorify me in your body and with your spirit, which is the Lord's. Just glorify me and, and let me take care of the business for you. Just glorify me. Just believe me, trust me, and know that everything's going to be all right. I said, you got victory already. Can you shout hallelujah? 
the church in the wilderness when they had been told by Joshua he was he was the captain of God's army there praise the Lord that the people coming out of out of Egypt and he told them that I don't want you to say nothing I don't want you to do anything until I give you the signal some of us praise the Lord would have probably start shouting or maybe not shout when he told them to shout but if they all waited until he gave them the word and he said unto them even before the walls start crumbling he said I want you to shout now because the Lord has given us the city and I want to say to you today you can shout now you don't have to see the crumbling of the wall you don't have to see your enemy falling but I want to tell you today that the wall has already been torn down all we got to do is to shout I don't care how it looked to you I don't care what the devil say you got the victory I said you got the victory you don't have to wait you don't have to wait until the rapture you can shout now and give God praise you got the victory whatever it is God has given you the victory shout yes in Jesus name to the glory of God you got it you got it you got it you got it thank you for it Jesus the Lord had a couple of disciples with him on one occasion and he went to a certain place and they didn't want him to preach. They didn't treat him like they should have treated him. And those disciples said, let's call down fire. <laughs> but the Lord said, no, no, don't call down no fire. I didn't come to destroy men's life. I came to save. Hallelujah. But there are some, there are some, some movements who if you don't do what they say, they want to bring you out. I know of a movement where it says, yeah, once they become part of their movement, if you change your your movement they have you taken out in other words to them it's against the law for you to find Jesus in your life hallelujah the Lord he uses his word and he uses his love for people to come to him. He said on one occasion with loving kindness, if I draw you, you know, if I have to buy you, if I have to pay you to love me, That's very shaky love. Because when my money run out. And the Lord will never accept that attitude. The people in the church sometimes is only what they can get. Not what they can give. But the famous president said on one occasion, he said that, think not what your nation can give to you, but what you can give to your country. And what an important expression it is. Because I believe whenever you make up that kind of spirit and mind, you open the door for blessings to flow. God will begin to bless you because 
you want others blessed. And you would even go out of your way to bless somebody. Thank you for it, Jesus. Isn't that a blessing, y'all? I thank him for it. Hallelujah. And they say there are three special conditions for Christians and those three special conditions and special principles are do not retaliate. Don't fight nobody because they fight you. Don't just say you don't do me like that. Well, Jesus Christ suffered extensively. And he didn't fight back. That's Matthew 5, 39. He said, don't retaliate. And the second principle is to do more than you are required. That's another principle. That's in the 40th verse of that same chapter. And the third principle is be kind and generous. Romans 12, 14. There's certain things God looks upon and rewards it and blesses it. You cannot go an extra mile because God said so without a reward. God will double what you would have gotten otherwise or you would have been, the windows would have been open for you. The compelling triumph which Christ Jesus Christ has done for us gives us the ability to do these kinds of things. Because we know that the door is always open to us. As he said in Revelation, the church of Philadelphia, when he said that I set before you an open door, nobody can close it. When I open the door for you, it's open. And Satan cannot close a door that God opens for his people. And I'm going to give him some praise for it. I'm going to give him glory and honor for having triumphed over Satan. I said he triumphed over him. He triumphed, he having spoiled principalities and powers. And he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. He got victory over them. And, and we're saying that, that this, this, this is all about us. It was all about us. Jesus Christ he came down here because he wanted to give us victory. And now we have it. And, and why should we complain now? We got victory. And all we need to do is to say to Jesus, thank you for my victory. Obey him, serve him, give him the best we got. And before you know it, you'll be getting the harvest like your pastor's getting this harvest. I'm, I'm getting the harvest. And I'm not just talking about, I'm not talking about 50 years. I, I'm talking about something beyond that, saints. I, I'm talking about a spiritual influx. I'm talking about a spiritual touch. I'm talking about something of which cannot be received from a natural perspective. It is all about the presence of God. God is a good God. Is he good to you? I said he's a miracle worker. 
He's already fought your battle. He has already fixed it for you. So you don't need to try to wrestle with nobody and, and try to uh, involve retaliation. And But when somebody uh, uh, persuades you to go one mile, it, praise, God has blessed you so much you can go a second mile. And if somebody has taken your coat, you can give them your shirt too because God is going to supply for you. How many know that God has already fought the battle for you? All you got to do is to give him some praise and, and stop worrying about how folks treat you. Oh, praise the Lord because the devil is a liar. He treated the Lord all kinds of ways, but thank God he came out victorious. And you too are going to come out victorious if you can hold on and believe God and know that God's word cannot fail. If God said it, it's coming to pass. I said it's coming to pass. You got the victory already. Praise the Lord. When you get home, I want you to go into the closet and find you somewhere and just give God some praise. Dance a little bit. If you don't know how to dance, just shake a leg somehow and give God some praise and, and let the Lord know I appreciate you. You gave me victory over all of my adversary. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for my healing. Stand on your feet. Let's give him some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He triumphed over. God triumphed over all of the principalities and powers. He did it openly so nobody can say he cheated. He did it openly before the eyes of the world. They hung him on the cross and they said it's over now. Satan started having his parties. Satan's having a party on you now. But he doesn't know you got the victory. You're going to disappoint him. <laughs> you got the victory. Satan is having his parties now. He said, I got you. I got you. When they hung Jesus on that cross, they wouldn't start having parties. Because the prophet said that you couldn't break no bones in this man. He dismissed his spirit when they got there to break his legs. To increase and speed up death. He had already dismissed his spirit. And he had made himself and made his way. Into the grave. Someone said he started a revival down there. <laughs> yes, uh, he got Moses, Elijah, and all of those who were persecuted and so on for him, but they went down in the faith. So the Lord first took the keys from, from death. So nobody else who believed me will ever die. He took the keys of death. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he took the, the, the keys of hell. And he led captivity captive. Gave gifts to men. God has gifted you and every saved person in this house has a gift from God. Satan wants to keep you from using that gift. What is important is that you discover it and use it to the glory of God.